let us see some more problems in this session see a three phase induction motor coupled to a pump is operating at normal speed if one line gets disconnected the motor stops we have to say now whether it is true or false okay basically like you know many guys will be confused between like you know this and open delta connection of transformer okay for example if i have delta connected or star whatever it may be or it can be star also okay so this is going to be the three phase okay so if i supply three phase supply to here or three phase supply to here how many types of time displaced currents flow ia will flow ib will flow ic will flow or ia will flow ib will flow ic will flow we need not maintain any return path because ia plus ib plus ic equal to zero at any instant of time now for example if it gets disconnected okay so if it gets disconnected or if it's get disconnected okay so previous to that disconnection we should have three phases now one is gone one is gone so how many phases will be there will not be two but it will be only one okay because if you see like you know once it is disconnected okay let me explain first star connection for example it got disconnected okay now is it possible to have phase a uh, a current here and phase c current here where is the return path no so combinedly only one current will flow only one current will flow so only one phase like you know out of three phases if one phase fail it will become single phase machine okay for example here also here also for example here ia is flowing here like you know ic cannot flow so combinedly only one current will flow this is called as single phasing <coughs> okay so means out of three phases if one phase fail it will become single phase motor okay so single phase motor of course in single phase motor we are going to deal single phase motor don't have its own self starting but if you rotate in one direction it will continue to operate in the same direction we will see in induction single phase induction now what did he say three phase induction motor coupled to a pump is operating at normal speed okay so it's already operating at normal speed then one of the phase blows it will become single phase and it's already rotating so like you know we need not have any separate self uh, like you know starting torque now because it's already started so it will continue to rotate of course at reduced speed or increased what do you say slip now let us see one more question when a supply to an induction motor is reduced by 10 10 percent the maximum torque will be decreases by approximately okay so what is the torque speed equations torque speed equation sorry torque speed characteristic is this okay so this is going to be tem which is nothing but like you know pull out torque or maximum torque okay so for example if i reduce voltage if i reduce voltage what is the torque equation actually our torque equation okay means uh, te or td i think te or td can be used so torque developed equal to m by omega s into pg i2 square r2 by s so that is going to be i2 square is going to be v square v1 square divided by something divided by something will come so directly i can say torque directly proportional voltage square okay so point here is for example pull out torque i told you in our previous session also maximum torque and starting torque has to be decided by my by my machine operating torque will be decided by the load okay so for example if i think of like you know pull out torque tm okay is going to be m by omega s into we derive this equation v1 square by 2x2 so pull out torque is directly proportional to voltage square okay so if i reduce voltage by 10 percent means that my supply voltage will be 90 percent okay then my pull out torque will be reduced by voltage square 90 percent square is going to be 81 percent okay so 81 percent of maximum torque will be remained means that like you know this particular pull out torque from here to here reduction will be 19 percent 0.9 square is going to be 81 percent so 100 percent minus 81 percent is going to be 19 percent so pull out torque will be reduced by 19 percent okay means that roughly 20 percent okay now see here actually one thing let me tell you here that's why like you know for example if a machine is designed for 400 volts just like that okay so if a machine induction motor is designed for 400 volts 
now if you reduce the voltage normally by reducing the voltage also we can maintain speed control okay for example in this case in this case in order to have a normal torque for example this is the low torque requirement okay if that is a low torque requirement like you know black is operating at this slipper speed and red is operating at another slipper speed so by varying voltage we can vary speeds or not yes we can vary speeds okay but do we use that no we should not use that because pull out torque will be reduced by square of the times okay and of course starting torque also we'll see about that later but anyway point to be noted here is speed control we are not going to handle directly we are going to solve problems because once we have torque equation why to solve and why to like you know analyze the things directly we will solve problems only now let us see one more question an ac induction motor is used for a speed control application it is driven from an inverter with constant v by f control okay the motor nameplate details are as follows they have given voltage 415 3 phase 50h and it is operating at 2850 rpm now the motor is uh, run with the inverter output frequency is set at 40 h now frequency is reduced and with half rated slip half rated slip okay the running speed of motor is okay actually in this question many guys feel like you know because they have given speed control speed control and constant v by f control so they will think like you know okay we have to use uh, what do you say v by f control or variable voltage variable frequency control and this is speed control and they have given inverter also they have given inverter also these are the terms like you know because of which like you know your analysis will be sidetracked okay so in a plain hearted way if you see you know the speed in the first case and you can calculate slip and half of that slip it is going to be so half of the rated slip and they have given frequency in the first case they have given frequency in the second case so what is there okay so there is nothing like speed control analysis here don't be trapped in that directly calculate for example in the first case in the first case of 50h how much will be ns1 synchronous speed is going to be 120 into f by number of poles are uh, number of poles are two they have given okay number of poles are 2 is going to be 3000 now how much is the slip here is going to be 3000 minus 2850 by 3000 okay so that slip is going to be like you know 5 percent 5 percent okay now let me calculate like you know what is s2 s2 is going to be half of s1 directly they have given so 0 0.5 into 5 percent is going to be 2.5 percent now what is ns2 is going to be 120 into frequency they have given 40 h divided by 2 right so in that case like you know i'm going to get what is nr2 in the second case nr2 okay is going to be ns2 into 1 minus s synchronous speed into 1 minus s okay so ns2 you know and slip 2 slip 2 you know directly you please calculate the answer is going to be 23 40 in this question actually this is the match the following it is actually like you know in our previous sessions we discussed like you know torque power torque characteristic power factor characteristic current characteristic efficiency characteristic those are the things they have given but still why i have taken is like you know one of the popular publications has published it wrong okay you should not be like you know you should not get misconception that's why i have taken question is very easy in x-axis if it is load y-axis should be efficiency out of these curves we have to select one okay so efficiency characteristic this should be load percentage of load okay so at no load 100% of full load and this is efficiency y axis should be efficiency for example at no load how much will be the efficiency zero okay so at no load efficiency is going to be zero means that character should be black or blue it should be black you know okay so the black is number five five so it is going to be curve t is going to be the a okay now b if you see speed current characteristic okay so this is going to be speed now this is going to be current now okay if speed is zero means that i strongly hold it the rotor are not rotate okay so at starting how much will be the current huge currents will flow 
okay because at starting if i strongly hold it the rotor not to rotate how much will be the relative velocity between stator mmf and rotor is ns because rotor is not rotating so when relative velocity is high automatically induced voltage in the rotor will be high stantial induced voltage okay so when induced voltage is high automatically rotor currents will be high even like you know one of the main disadvantage of induction motor is like you know starting currents are high starting power factor is very less okay so starting currents like you know if it is speed if it is like you know y axis current at starting it should be high and here like you know if it is rotating at ns speed ns speed okay this is going to be speed now this is going to be speed x axis is going to be speed so if it is rotating at 100% of speed means that ns if uh, it is rotating at uh, ns speed automatically current should be much reduced actually many guys feel this current as zero for example if rotor is rotating at synchronous speed rotor current will be zero because rotor induced voltage will be zero because like you know there will be no relative velocity between stator mmf and rotor which is not right actually that is interview question in discussion like you know in detail course or maybe in the latter session we will do so like you know at starting current should be more and after that current should be reduced so blue if you see third curve like you know starting currents are more at uh, running conditions current magnitudes are less so it should be three so three should be b okay now next thing is like you know let us think of speed and power factor speed and power factor now if the speed is zero if the speed is zero x axis if the speed is zero starting power factor should be high sorry starting power factor should be low that is the disadvantage of induction motor we discussed about it okay so at starting power factor is going to be less and in running conditions power factor should be improved so starting power factor should be less in running condition power factor should be improved to nearer to unity okay so it should be red in the sense two so it should be two okay but some publications has given p like you know they have to correct themselves now next thing is let us take one more question a 400 volt 50 kilowatt 4 pole 50 h star connected induction motor has full load slip of 4 percent the output torque of the machine at full load is okay so directly they are asking like you know the output torque of the machine in the sense developed torque okay so if they ask a uh, kind of developed torque ah uh, yes so how much is the slip here they have given 4 percent okay so if they give uh, four percent and output is going to 15 kilowatt output is going to 15 kilowatt so shaft power is going to be 15 kilowatt okay shaft power is going to 15 kilowatt how much should be the developed power okay so developed mechanical power developed mechanical power developed mechanical power minus mechanical losses is going to be shaft power but did they give any information about mechanical losses no so this is shaft power means that it is developed power okay because in between these two mechanical losses are there they did not give any information so forget about mechanical losses now can i say like you know torque developed torque developed can be written as m by omega s will come anyway p d m by omega r p d by omega r per phase or p g by omega s anything can be done okay because four percent of slip they have given okay so directly we can do like you know 15 kilowatt divided by omega r omega r in the sense how much is nr nr is nothing but one minus s into ns so it's going to be one minus four percent point zero four point zero four into synchronous speed is four pole 50 h so it will be synchronous speed will be 1500 so 1500 okay so you please keep this nr here so 2 pi nr this nr divided by 60 divided by 60 okay so you are going to get 99.47 newton meters or else you can do one thing also rather than this because pd by omega r or pg by omega s pg by omega s what is the difference between pd and pg pg is the air gap power in the sense the rotor power input pd is a mechanical developed power is going to be the output of the rotor circuit in the sense for example what i can do is let me think of pg by omega s so pg by omega s how to do for example how much is pd pd is 15 kilowatt this is going to be torque developed actually now now pd is going to be 15 kilowatt now let me calculate pg how much is pg 
divided by 1 minus s. Okay. Now you please consider this torque developed equal to Pg by omega s. Okay. Now you have to consider Pg by omega s is going to be 2 pi ns. ns is how much? 1500 into uh, 60 divided by 60. 2 pi ns by 60. This also will give the same answer. Okay. But anyway, point we have to observe one thing here. If, for example, if you forget, if you forget this in the exam, normally that's why I say like, you know, IIT professors sir, they know everything here. Okay. So, if you forget, for example, this, for example, this, you will get this answer. Okay. So, because of like, you know, in the pressure, in the exam pressure, if you forget about this, means then also you will get answer. And in the exam, you may feel you have done right. Okay. Now, whatever, whatever we discussed here, the same thing like, you know, from theoretical point of view, let us see in another question. It's a small question. For an induction motor operating say, at slip, yes, the ratio of gross power output to area power. Okay. So, for example, if I think of my rotor circuit, this is going to be rotor circuit. This is going to be R2 into 1 minus S by S. So, this is going to be R2 and this is going to be x2 and this is going to be v2 or e2 or rotor induced voltage okay so at standstill conditions so vth i can say directly okay because rth xth already been neglected in our previous sessions now for example what is the power input here power input here to the rotor is air gap power what about the developed power here developed power is pd now, what is the difference between PG and PD? He is going to be rotor copper loss. So, how much is the rotor copper loss? S yes, into PG. S yes, into PG. So, rotor copper, already we derived this in our previous session. Okay. So, if I give PG, S yes, into PG will be like, you know, consumed in the name of rotor copper loss. 1 minus S yes, into PG will come to here, PD. Okay. So, what is PD here? PD is going to be 1 minus S yes, into PG or input power basically we can say one thing here what is the efficiency maximum possible efficiency on paper of an induction motor is one minus s okay because like you know what is the output power pd what is the input power pg is going to be one minus s okay so you may neglect like you know stator copper loss you may neglect uh, stator core loss you may neglect mechanical loss, but without like, you know, considering rotor copper loss, induction machine will not work, already we have done the videos there, okay. So, point here is, what should be the maximum efficiency even on paper, even on paper. You can neglect all losses, but not rotor copper loss, okay. So, means the maximum possible efficiency in an induction motor on paper is 1 minus S, okay. So,